Hey there lovely people, Jonathan Matman is Painted Love and welcome to my channel. Today's project is one of two halves. I have a dear old friend of mine back in the studio. That is this sideboard, which I completed just over seven years ago. And I never did any video content on the how-tos of the fabric decoupage on the lower half and the dark faux marbling on the top. Now the pieces come back in the studio because it's took a little bit of a beating on the top surface from car keys, hot mugs, um, cats, you name it. It's had everything thrown on the top surface. So I thought I'd give the original piece a refre refresh on the marble surface. Meanwhile, everything that I did on the lower half of this project, we're going to complete that on this small coffee table. So let's take a closer look at the projects. Before I start cleaning down this piece of furniture, I just wanted to point out one or two things that I thought was really lovely. So this architectural detail in this coffee table, the arch, really marries into the arch on the sideboard, as well as the um, trim work around the legs. It really marries into all of the knuckles on the original piece. And I thought that the two would work really well together. So here is the original piece of fabric which went onto the sideboard seven years ago. I have just enough to do the top of this project. So the fabric came from a charity shop. It was a charity shop find in the bedding and curtain section. Now bedding usually is a great fabric because it has a high thread count, which means it's super fine, but it has lots of um, the, the weave of the fabric is really, really tight. So it will go on just as good as any other decoupage paper that you might have used in the past. Anything too thick, um, you don't want anything too thick as a fabric because you will struggle with finishing over the top. Now talking of finish, you may see that the sideboard looks much darker than this original fabric and that's because it had lashings of dark wax over the project once I'd completed it. The background colour is crucial so the background colour of your original piece of fabric you need to marry that up to the paint so I cannot remember which colour I mixed. I know that there was Barcelona orange in there, there may be a touch of Provence to make it a little bit more mustardy and I think country grey. So I'm going to have a little bit of a play. I will give you the recipe of what this colour is once I've found that colour. We'll get cleaning up and then we can put our first coat of paint on the project. So let's have a little bit of fun with colour mixing. So last week's project, I mixed up a strong shade of mustard using furl and a touch of paprika red. So as you can see in the bowl, this is the shade that I mixed up last week. Now it is a strong shade of mustard, so I will need to lighten this. I've decided to go in with country grey to lighten the overall shade. I could have used some old white and just knocked it back a little bit, but I thought the country gray adds a little bit more body to the overall color. And as you can see, it's pretty much the background color of the fabric, but I did need to mix up a little bit more paint because 
I wasn't sure I was going to have enough for this project. So in with those three shades once again. You could mix up um, Barcelona Orange, quite a lot of, with a touch of Provence and you'll end up with a muted shade of mustard and then a little bit of country grey. I think that's the original shades I used on the original project. But here you go, as you can see, pretty much the background colour of the fabric. Let's test it out on some paper just to see how close we got it. And we need to check this out when the paint is actually dried. That's a better indication of the overall colour. And I'm pretty happy with what came out. I can now proceed with the painting of the coffee table ready for the decoupage project. Whilst I'm waiting for the small coffee table to dry, we're going to address some of the prep work involved in a chalk painted faux marble finish. So this piece of furniture has already got a finish on it and it is the colourway that I'm working to, but what you would need to do on a raw piece of wood, something that has got no paint finish, you're going to need to give it a base coat in the colour background of your faux marble. Now, should it be something like my worktops, a Carrera marble with a white background and a dark vein, you would go in with a couple of coats of old white. In this case, it was a couple of coats of graphite, and then you will need to seal that down with Annie Sloan wax. So that first layer, once you've got your wax on, take a cloth and really burnish the cloth, really polish the wax into that first layer. The reasoning behind this is we're going to be using a lot of water on the uh, process of veining and also the agitation of a brush might wet distress the edges. So you wouldn't want a line of the timber on the sharp edges shining back through 
um, to the surface, otherwise it will spoil the illusion. So seal down your first two coats, um, then we're gonna go in with another coat of dark paint. Once that's dried, we can start all of the magical adding the veins to the surface. I hope all of that makes sense. I've decided to use a little bit of Athenian black. I'm gonna go across in patches on 45 degree angles um, and also a touch of graphite as well. This original finish was only graphite. Annie's um, Athenian black didn't come out until a little after I did this project. So I'm gonna make it a little bit darker in areas ready to receive all of those beautiful veins on the surface. So you may have noticed that I didn't give the top surface a second coat of its base colour and that's because I'm going to be using Annie Sloan Old White wherever I'm going to apply the decoupage. Now with most paper decoupage, rice paper, other products that you use on furniture, it does tend to like a light background. If you have any white in the image, it will make the white stand out true to its colour and the same applies with very thin fabric. So should I have painted this black and then applied my fabric decoupage with my glue, then it would distort the colours on the surface of the decoupage. So I'm roughly going to go, not all the way up to the edges, but just roughly I'm going to give this a coat of old white, allow it to dry and then we can go in with our fabric decoupage. Okay, so the old white has dried and we're good to go with the fabric decoupage. What I have done off camera is I've just cut it to 
more or less the size that I want it to be. I've left quite a lot of overhang so I can manipulate it where I want it to sit in the tabletop. Um, I am really happy with the colour match, it's not too bad. The fabric will darken slightly with the glue over the top. So the glue that I'm using, in the UK we have PVA glue, it's white craft glue. If you're in America, you might want to use Elmer's craft glue. It's basically white glue that goes transparent um, and it will end up really rock solid once it's had a coat of glue underneath and a coat of glue over the top. What else do I need to mention at this stage? I think that's about it really. Oh, also, I've got an old credit card, an old, this is a trade card that I use. And that's just gonna be there just to smooth out all of the bubbles, pushing it from the center outwards. So let's crack on with the gluing. The craft glue, um, PVA glue is quite thick in the UK. So I've added 5% water just to allow the um, glue to have a larger open time. It will be easier to spread out on the surface. Um, Elmer's glue is pretty much the same consistency. I know because I've just come back from America and I went in um, Hobby Lobby and I picked up a small glue because I just wanted to see the consistency. One that I could bring back in my hand luggage. So I now, um, I know what all the fuss is about with Hobby, Lo Hobby Lobby, what an amazing place. And also I got chance to visit Target as well. I now know what you're all talking about when you, talk about those two stores. So um, if you're not in America, you probably won't know what those stores are, but I hear a lot about them on social media and they really are magical stores that I could spend a lot of time in. Um, and it was a real pleasure just to spend some time there. I'm just gonna pour this on, it'll be quicker. So as you can see, a generous amount of glue we want the glue to go all the way, penetrate all the way through the fabric to the top surface. And we will we'll be applying another amount of glue to the top of the fabric. Remember, this is a, a coffee table. It needs to be really hard wearing with the fabric. So that's why I'm adding all of this glue. It needs to go right the way through all of those fibers. go stray hair there it's a new brush the birds have been really rowdy today in my studio you probably can hear them on camera so I'm making sure that there's an even layer of glue everywhere right up to the edges. Now, don't worry if you get glue up the edges, that's fine. Um, we want the fabric to have glue on those edges so we can make a nice clean cut. A little later on, when this is all dry, we can use a blade and get a really clean cut. Right, I think I am happy with that spread. And now we're gonna pick up the fabric. I'm gonna slide it, with this having a lip on it, it's, it's quite a lot easier just to line up where I want it to be. And of course it's fabric, it's not gonna tear like paper does. You've got loads of wriggle room with this. I'm gonna pull it down a little bit there so we can get more of those flowers, a bit more. Can you see it's already darkening the color of the fabric a little bit. I think the thing is about fabric decoupage, it's, I think it's actually easier um, than paper, because paper can tear. So I'm going from the center out and I'm just pushing with my credit card or store card outwards. Especially with fine fabric, this works so beautifully well. Sorry about the rattle on the table, that's annoying, isn't it? Wow. 
Now you should see the glue pulling through to the surface. That's all good. I have got some paint marks on this fabric, which is a shame. I didn't notice that. Never mind. We could maybe even touch that up with the paint. So that white glue does want to be show, showing on the surface. What I'm going to do is take some scissors just to free up the corners. That's it. Just to allow that to sit in the corners nicely. It. Each corner. That just helps those corners sit flat until it's dried. I think this would look amazing with silk. If you've got an old sari or something like that, it would absolutely lay down so beautifully well with sari fabric maybe. You can get some amazing designs. So just pushing out. to the corners. Should I try and fix that now before we put some glue on it? Let's try. I'm just gonna... Mm, this is the, the paint color, the original paint color. I don't suppose it matters too much there was another bit somewhere else here. It does disguise it just a little bit. Yeah. Something running through there. I think it's just the ink from the print. But that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is give it another coat of the glue over the top. So you want to be generous with the glue. It'll really, what it'll do, it's consolidate from one surface to the other. So it'll go through those fibers and it will harden um, to one another. So it becomes all encapsulated which will make it really hard wearing. We're also going to be later on using Annie Sloan lacquer on the top surface as well, just belt and braces and a layer of wax. So it's going to have lots of layers of protection to the surface. This white will go opaque Sorry, the opaque will go translucent. That's funny. The other way around, John. Another stray hair there. Brand new brush. That's it. And just before I move on, I will check those colour marks. I don't know if it's actually part of the design feels like this fabric has been screen printed. Just the right amount of glue.
Now, if you're working with a thicker fabric, what you need to do is constantly keep your eye on this. Don't try it and heat the fabric to dry it, leave it to naturally dry. Um, don't put it in the sunshine. Um, I had problems with the wardrobe I did a long time ago and that was because it was black fabric and I think what it did, the heat of the sunshine outside my workshop kind of um, made it dry too quick and I got some wrinkles. But if you do get wrinkles, take an atomizer, um, spritz it down, it will reactivate the glue as it's drying and then you can use your credit card once again just to smooth everything down, push it back down to the surface. Another hair. Now the glue on the edges, you want plenty of glue to go on the edges because it will harden, the fabric will harden and then it will allow you to take a blade to the surface and cut through the fabric, make a nice clean cut. Okay, so we're gonna start the marbleizing or veining on the surface of our chalk paint. But I want to show you a few of the things that I've got to hand. So number one, a brush, a synthetic brush with a bristle, a long haired bristle like this. I've got a few of them. Um, things that look like this, nice and soft. You want a soft, clean, dry brush. I've got four to hand there. I've got my spray atomizer. I have a sponge. This is a, it's not a real sea sponge, but it's nevertheless, it's pretty good. I've got some dry cloth, some cotton cloth. I've got a sanding pad. I've got a variety of brushes. Now the brushes that I like to use for veining are these long haired brushes. They're called rigger brushes. They've got really long, thin, but really long hair. Um, I've got a couple of normal art brushes. That's what we're gonna start with. And I've brought out Annie Sloan Old White Paris Grey and a touch of Arl, because I thought that orangey tone in there might be really lovely. And what I've done is I've taken a bowl and there's some Old White and Arl in there. Old White and Paris Grey, sorry. The Arl lives there. And we're going to start off with a light sand on the surface with an Annie Sloan medium sanding pad just to knock back any lumps that might be on the surface. Just a light touch. Use your hands just to feel if there's any raised areas. And I 
I know it looks a hot mess at this stage, but then you're going to need to really dust that off. Notice I've also got a faux marble in the background. This is a different colourway. There's Amsterdam green and Furl, Paris grey. There's a little bit of Provence in there. I'm using that as kind of my inspiration, but it's something that I did a long while ago and it still looks pretty good. So once you've knocked back any lumps, you can usually feel them, it's pretty good. Don't sand too vigorously, otherwise you're just gonna take that top layer of paint off, which we've just applied. And then we're gonna go in with the atomizer and spray down the whole surface. This one's running out. Let me grab a water spray, it'll be quicker. The atomizer generally is a better um, tool to use, but just to get some water on this surface quick, I'm going to use a plant spray. You really want to saturate the whole surface. And this is going to add the lubricant to be able to manipulate our pigments. Right, so. Pretty good. So now I'm going to take my clean cloth and I'm just going to move that water around on the surface by patting. It does want to have a coat of water everywhere. So your paint, you don't want to be really using this in its solid out of the can. We really need to add a touch of water. So I would say about 20 to 30% water to your paint. This will add some fluency when it comes to adding your veining. I'm just gonna mix that around. This is the old white and Paris gray. Oops, already had an accident. Didn't get the front, did I? No. I'm not gonna worry about that, that can stay there. A little bit more water. So you should end up with, with paint just falling off. It's a bit like a color wash, just falling off the brush. So the first pass is the under veining, the sort of um, highlighting and low lighting the deep veins that live deep inside the stone. So we're going to take the brush on a 45 degree angle, we're going to work across the piece and I'm just going to hold the brush on the, you know, under, on the end of the brush with my wrist facing up and just kind of relax into it and kind of wiggle the brush around, dragging and pulling the brush. And we'll do a game, we're going to kind of make this sort of connect. I'm just going to be playful. The first pass you can be really, really, really playful and manipulate that paint a little bit wherever you fancy putting it. I'm going to leave some sort of dead areas. I'm really going to go for this and see what happens. Blend those spots in. So, really heavy as you can see. Pop that paint over there. And I'm going to go back in with another spritz of water with the plant spray. Make sure it's nice and wet. And then we're going to pick up our cloth and we're going to bundle it up into a little kind of rosette shape and then we're just going to 
kind of offload the paint, but also rotating our cloth. So it just picks the paint up. So dabbing and rotating. It doesn't matter if it overprints somewhere else, that's fine. This is just literally the first pass and it's fine if you get paint everywhere at this point. This is gonna add sort of gray highlights deep beneath the um, the marbleization. So, in again, I'm just drying off a little bit the water on the surface. If it's too wet, you'll find that this will all just blend away. So you do need to kind of mop up a little bit of that water for this to really work out well. Make sure you always do a little dash where it connects off the edge of your cabinet as well. Just the odd bit here and there. There we go. So now I'm going to take my synthetic brush and I'm gonna use it any what way. So I'm just gonna pull this around, kind of dashing it in all different directions. And what you'll find is it'll push that gray white mixture into the background color. So you may need to take your cloth just to offload any excess paint. And pull this out. That's it. So let's speed things up. So as you can see, I've done that first layer of veining, which is the ghosted veins, the ones that sit deep within the marble surface. I'm using the softener brush and I'm also going back for a little spritz of water, offloading with my cloth and then softening with the brush once again. Once I'm happy with the ghosted veins that live deep within the marble surface, I'm gonna pick up my long rigger brush and I'm going to follow some of those marks that I made on the first pass and make finer versions of those marks, which you can see me doing here over the top and kind of following some of those veins. I was going for a really craggy finish on this one, kind of um, jiggy jaggy sort of movements with the brush, pulling the brush, pushing the brush in different directions. I must admit, I'm not too sure that I was happy with the overall color that I'd mixed up, the Paris gray and old white. I think probably I would have been better with country gray as I was applying to the surface, but I'm going for it. Um, it is very forgiving, this marbling technique. You can kind of brush all of the marks away and come back to that surface color. So you can be quite playful. You'll learn quite a lot from just playing with your brush on the surface. As you can see, I'm just mopping some of that wet paint up, ready to do the softening technique, using the atomizer once again, and then softening away with my long, synthetic brush to blend all of those marks away. I have to admit, 
I wasn't feeling this colorway. It was too much like the original, to be honest. I really wanted to change it up and make it something really special. So at this point, I had a change of plan. I kind of more or less erased all of these marks that I made with plenty of water, softening away with the brush and the cloth and I decided to go a little bit crazy with the Arl colour that I'd mixed up in the bowl. I thought some golden veining might look better with the project. So that's the way I went and started all over again. <laughs>
I'm now day two of these two projects. I did stay in the studio a little later on after filming and gave the foam marble a coat of dark and black wax just to allow it to cure overnight. And then this morning I've come in and given it a really good polish. I've burnished the wax in to get a high sheen. Now this is something that I don't do very often, especially with the paler marble. I quite like the matte luster of the wax without the polishing up. But this time around, I've just gone for a polished finish. I'm pretty happy with that marbling. Considering we started out with the Paris Grey Old White Mix and ended up with a golden marble, I really quite like it. And it just goes to show that when you're doing that technique, as long as you've got that base coat, you can keep on working it. So you saw how many times I reworked it and eventually the lines that I put in for the veining, I felt like they were right. So I was just following the lines that I did until the overall scape of the marble seemed to be really lovely. So give it a go. Back to the table. Now the table this morning had one or two wrinkles. Now I think that's because I applied, remember I poured the glue on. I think I applied a little too much glue, but no love lost there. If you do have one or two air bubbles under your fabric decoupage, you can atomize and just press back down and allow it to dry. Alternatively, if it's nearly dry, you can go in with an iron. And I just took this into the house this morning, give it an iron press and it, it dries the glue underneath and presses the fabric down. So you will get a smooth finish if you're worrying about that. So now it's time to take a craft blade and remove the surplus fabric. Also, I did make sure that the connection in that groove was really tight. I kept on pushing a credit card into that groove just to make sure that it was really adhered to the edges. Now, if you do get some lift off from the edges, you can go back in with your glue and just stick them back down. So let's get stuck in with the blade, remove all the edges. We can tidy up the paintwork. We've also got the lacquer, a thin coat of lacquer, just for a little bit more protection. Then we can do the waxing.
I finish up with clear wax and dark wax, I'm going to lightly sand the project with an Annie Sloan sanding pad. I've got a coarse and a medium just to reveal some of the timber underneath. You can also use your medium sanding pad just to sand over the fabric. That will help with smoothing down the lacquer on the surface just to allow a cleaner um, surface to apply your wax to. coat of wax we're going to go in with our dark wax and we're going to use quite a lot of dark wax so don't be frightened always keep your clear wax to hand if you feel like it's getting a little bit too muddy and you want to remove some wax you can do once you've got that first layer of wax on the clear wax will remove it also what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same brush this brush is um, a old brush but it has got a flat head unlike an Annie Sloan um, wax brush that, which has got a point and the reason for that is later on once I've got the wax on and I'm really happy with the way it's sitting I'm going to go in with a stipple motion on the end of this brush just to kind of create natural patina over the whole piece. Mm -hmm. 